What's up guys, Austin here. I wanna talk about a topic that's a little gloomy. I've made a lot of videos talking about how to farm Chia, how to optimize your plotting and stuff like that, but I haven't really talked about the bigger picture. And that's something I think a lot of you are probably a little bit frustrated or discouraged by. And that's basically like your profitability doing this. So as you guys probably know, Chia net space is pretty freaking big right now. It's like, I think at the time of this video, it's about 17, more than 17 exabytes. And that's huge, right? That's a lot. And so for smaller farmers and people who aren't part of H pool, you know, it is, it's tough out here right now. We're not doing so hot, right? your chances of winning are very low and it's basically, yeah, you're like in a lottery and it, it can be really frustrating and discouraging because you've put money into this equipment, you spent time setting it up, you have your plots and nothing's happening. Now, I wanted to make this video because I, I wanna give you guys some advice and if you're feeling kind of on the down on the dumps about Chia, I just wanna give you a little bit of perspective. Um, because this is what's helping me kind of go through all this and not get too distracted by the noise, essentially. She is not my first like mining, farming, cryptocurrency venture. This is actually my second, okay? And so the first one was back in 2017. Ethereum hit, you know, $1,200 and I was like, holy moly, Ethereum's the future. I jumped on that hype train and was like, all right, this is, I want to get into this. I want a piece of it. And instead of just buying Ethereum outright, I was like, I'm going to, you know, mine it. It's going to pay long. It's going to pay more dividends in the future, right? If I can just generate it myself or get it, acquire it over time constantly myself and did some calculations was like, all right, you know, electricity costs factor that in Ethereum's $1,200. Let's do it. Right? Like I'm going to make profits. I'm going to turn like turn a profit every month, et cetera, et cetera. And so by the time I, you know, saved a little bit of money to invest in Ethereum mining rig, I think Ethereum was still hovering around like 900. I was like, okay, that's fine. You know, we're good. And then went ahead, bought my machine, spent I think about $5,000 and I bought, you know, six NVIDIA GeForce 1070 Ti's at the time and just got myself set up. And as I was setting up, it was like Ethereum was like, yeah, and it just kept dropping and dropping and dropping. And it got to the point where it was like, I think it was trading around like three, uh, like high 300s. And at that point, I was actually losing a little bit of money on the cost of electricity versus the amount that I was mining. You know, that sucked. I was very frustrated, unhappy. And basically, I just threw in the towel. I gave up, quit super early. I was like, you know what, screw this. I didn't even try to like recuperate the cost of my graphics cards because trying to resell them, I think I would have maybe got like 50% back and I was like, forget it. You know, like this is just a sunk cost. I like was done with it and I just quit very quickly into this. And you know, hindsight is 2020, right? And you know, being able to look back on that now, it's like, well, if I had kept up at it and I just persevered and I mind and maybe I operated a loss for a little bit, it would have been worth a lot of money today, right? Even after the Ethereum drop, but like at the peak of Ethereum a few months ago, it would have been worth a ton of money. And so that is the lesson that I learned, which was like, I quit way too early into the game. I let my emotions get kind of locked up and make me feel one way about Ethereum. And I just simply was like, eh, you know, this is meh, I don't, I don't like this. I'm losing a little bit of money here and there. I didn't believe in Ethereum. Like I was just like, all right, I'm here for to make money and make profit. And that's all I was here about. And I didn't really look at the bigger picture, you know, and just quit. And that's, so that's what happened to me. And that's why I'm trying to operate through Chia in a kind of longer term consensus. Okay. It's try, let's try, I'm trying to operate and view this as more of like a five to 10 year project which is hard. It's hard to think that far out. And it's hard to figure out like, is this gonna be successful? Will this pay off? What kind of returns am I gonna get? And just looking that far out is, it's a hard thing to do. But I think it's a very important thing to do because right now Chia is really, really young. Bitcoin's been around for over 10 years. Ethereum, I think over five, right? 
it's a long time and it takes a long time to get there. Now, granted, with cryptocurrency as a whole blowing up, right, things are going to kind of move faster, right? Bitcoin took a long time because cryptocurrency, blockchain, the whole concept was a very, very new thing. Nowadays, things are going to move a little bit faster, but still, Chia is so young. And so I encourage you guys to think about this from a longer term perspective. I know it's really frustrating right now because your chances of winning are literally like a lottery and your chances, unless you are a super whale or you have a hefty amount of hard drive space and you threw a lot of money into this, it's pretty slim right now. But regardless, right, like uh, an 18 terabyte hard drive is not cheap. Getting SSDs is not cheap. If you build a whole system around this, it's not cheap. And I know that that is something that's really frustrating for some of you guys. My only advice is, first of all, if you're looking to get rich quick in Chia, that's that's not gonna happen. I'm gonna be 100% honest with you guys. Like that ship sailed way long ago. If you were maybe testing on, if you were on the test net and you were plotting and you're doing all that stuff and you know you had the 100 terabytes or you know, 50 terabytes right when it started, you might've won a few times here and there, but right now there's no way you're gonna get rich quick. For those of you who are considering getting into Chia right now, my advice is look at this as a highly, highly speculative, okay? There are a few things that you can potentially gain from, from pursuing this endeavor, okay? And so first, let's just go with the monetary stuff. If you want to get into it right now, you may or may not win Chia. Probably, like it's not on your side. Um, Netspace is really, really big, but you could get lucky. Okay, but there are other factors involved, which are like you know setting up a plotter and building a machine to do that. That's actually a really cool learning experience um, for some of you. If you guys haven't created a Ubuntu Linux server. Getting that set up and running, you're gonna learn a lot doing that. If you are in Windows and you don't program and you want to use Swore's, you know, plotting manager, you're gonna get into some very elementary level like programming and operations. That's a cool experience, and I think those are skills and experiences that have value. You know, you're gonna you're gonna become more technical doing that. But yeah, if you're trying to get into this to like really make money you really consider the risks consider that like you could buy a machine now and it might not generate anything for you we know that pools are delayed further i'm sure that you know the chi team is working hard on getting it out and running but it's a complicated thing to create a protocol that works well guys if you like a pool it's funny because a pool sounds like such a non-hostile word and it's like simple and everyone knows what like a pool is right like a swimming pool but from like an engineering perspective, running a pool is really damn freaking hard. I looked into it. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to build one on my own. Doing one in the US is like even more impossible because there are so many regulations and laws that you're supposed to like abide by. And if you're doing like mass payouts to different people, it's really, really complex from a regulatory and law and accounting perspective. So you have to have a lot of people on your side. So most of the pools that we're going to see are probably going to be like outside of the US or you might see some operating in the US and I don't know, they might shut down every like quickly because eventually they'll be found. And if they're not doing the right things in terms of complying with like auditing and everything else, it could lead to something messy. Um, but they're really freaking hard. To set up so yeah like hopefully the people that come set up pools i think flex pools one i know they have an ethereum pool running and so i i believe that they probably have the capability space pool is the one that launched by um wow i forget his name but coin Break breakthrough his channel and they were trying to build one i don't know what they're planning on doing because i don't i don't talk to them um but they are probably running some of the same issues that you know I discovered when I was trying to like figure out how to get a pool set up. It's just very hard to do it if you're in the United States. And then of course, there's also H pool. I'm pretty neutral on H pool to be honest with you guys. I think for in general, I I I'm sticking out waiting for the official pools to get started, but for some of you if you want to make some of that money and get some of that payout, H pools it's not a bad option. Um yeah, do what's best for you. And obviously, if you do get an H pool, know the risks. You're putting stuff on your computer, which is mostly legitimate in terms of like how it works. It's not going to give you viruses. It's not going to scam you. 
but at the same time, you know, know that H pools run, there's fees that are a little bit ambiguous and there's all that kind of stuff. So just be wary of that if you decide to get in there. But yeah, the most important thing I think is try to set like a long-term goal and because like, I think that's, that's the best way to think about this is like Chia is such a new project. If you win even one time, let's say you just get two Chia, right? You get super lucky and you win this lottery. Who knows, right? Like five years from now, if Chia is training at like $50,000 in insane ROI, right? Chia could be maybe zero and that's like darn bummer. So then like your hardware and equipment is kind of a sunk cost and that's where you're at. But like, I think even looking at, uh, what's that one coin? Yearn Finance, I think, is the coin that I, I noticed. And they, when they started trading, they started trading at like $700, so close to what Chia was like. And then at some point in the peak, they hit $96,000, right? Not saying like, that's that's possible for Chia too, right? It's as possible as you potentially winning a block. Like we, who knows what's gonna happen? So, but like, if you quit early and you get out, you you've made you've basically made your chances of this zero, right? Like you've hundred percent solidified it as zero. And we're like, there's that silly Jim Carrey meme where it's like, so you're telling me there's a chance, right? If you're plotting, if you're farming, which is not very hard to do, right? Like even if you get your plots and you're operating from the GUI and you finish plotting, plotting is like once it's done, it just sits there. It doesn't do very much, right? And so it doesn't cost you that much time and pain to like manage it. You just keep your note up and it sits there and maybe one day you're going to win. Who knows, right? But it's a very low effort for a potentially huge payout, which is great in my opinion, right? Like if you can get that opportunity, I think like who wouldn't do that? If I told you that all you had to do was put a little bit of money, sink it in, and then potentially, you know, in five years, that money could 10, one, maybe even 100 X, right? Like you take that. I think that's kind of the perspective. Like, look at this from long term. Know that A, it's not, it's very speculative in nature, which means that this could be zero and whatever you put into it could be zero. So don't invest more than you can afford to. Okay. And if you come into that with that attitude, you'll be able to feel much better that like, and just let things go on. And then you know, with high, like this is super high risk, right? So of course it's super high reward, right? Your payout could be amazing. You could get really lucky. You know, there's some people that are lucky and then there's a ton of people that are unlucky. But I want you guys to think about this more from just like a longer term kind of perspective. And like, I, I think a lot of people are getting, letting kind of emotions get in the way. They're frustrated. They're mad at like Bram for, and like, I'll give you guys my real hot take. Of course, he's not super eloquent on Twitter. He's not like the most people friendly person. He's, you know, very logical, very blunt. And he just says it how, is it, how it is. But like, there's no reason to hate on him. Um, you know, he's trying, he's doing his work. He's putting in his time to build up Chia. They're doing it a totally different way, right? Going with the finance industry, like IPOing on Wall Street, like getting all of that. because. To be successful guys like unfortunately i think the concept of de like pure 100 percent decentralization hard to get there i don't know if that's going to happen governments are going to eventually step in people you know like it's not it's not going to just like we're not going to be our own decentralized entities there's going to be some intertwining with some of the more authoritative powers that run our world today so they're doing the right things to be on the right side of that, right? Like they are, you, they have investors, they have connections, like all of that really, even if you hate like the fact that it goes against like decentralization and all that, but it, if you're trying to make money, it sets the ground up for a lot, a lot more success potential. And that's it. That's like all I really wanted to talk about. I just wanted to give you guys like a different perspective. I know a lot of people are probably feeling a little bit down in the dumps about it and like it's not profitable. So like I said, if you have, if you can afford it and you find this stuff interesting, go ahead, set up a plot or do your thing, right? Know that your potential payout right now because pools don't exist is very, very low. It's like winning a lottery, right? If you are interested in this, but you maybe want a little bit more stability, wait till pools come out, pools will come out and you'll get, you'll join one and then the payout will be a little bit more stable. 
And then for those of you who don't have the conviction to evaluate this project for a long term, then I wouldn't I, I would stay away from Chia. Like take your money, do something else with it. But those are those are my like my hot takes. And I don't know, for any of you guys who yeah, if you're feeling discouraged, like I, I want to know how you guys actually feel. Like leave a comment. Tell me, tell me what's going on. Um what's your perspective on this? Do you think I'm totally missing the mark? You think I'm a freaking idiot? I don't know. I'm I'm curious to hear what you guys think. Would love to uh, love to have a conversation. So that's it. That's the end of this video. I just want to share those thoughts, um, address the elephant in the room. Hopefully, you know, if you guys want to carry this on this conversation, click the Discord. Let's have a conversation. Let's talk about it. See you guys in the next video.